tonight, more than 350,000 Iowans have a new congresswoman. Republican Marionette Miller Meeks was sworn into Congress on Sunday, flipping control of the second congressional district. But a group of voters in her district swear their votes weren't counted and that another person should be on Capitol Hill. Rita Hart, the Democrat, is challenging the recount process, appealing all the way to Congress. You have questions about this race. Should Miller Meeks have been sworn in? When will Rita Hart get her day on Capitol Hill? And is this the future of how elections will play out? Well, joining us now is Republican strategist Craig Robinson and Democratic strategist Pete D'Alessandro to help answer some of those questions that we have. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Good to be here. Good to be here. Well, first, let's start with the obvious. The United States House hasn't overturned a state election result since 1985. Craig, you first. How likely is it to happen in this case? I don't think it's very likely to happen. Um, I think with a lot of things, there's a lot of bluster and a lot of emotion out there. But I think at the end of the day, um, it's going to be, you know, life is normal. All right. And Pete, same question for you. Do you do you think it's likely to happen? Well, I, I don't I don't know if it's likely to happen, but I think the process is playing out the way it should. And they're going to look at it. And if these votes that I believe should be counted are counted, and it, and it does show that, that, that Rita Hart won, I think they will seat her. They won't be afraid of seating her if they have that um, evidence that those 22 votes or if we get a full recount and the number changes, I think they'll seat her if that's the case. Okay, so what does this contest mean for the state Senate seat formerly held by Miller Meeks, if it means anything at all for that seat? And Pete, we're going to uh, have you go first here. Well, I think it's going to be, I think that's an interesting uh, a race because that is one of those places where Democrats had done very well uh, for a lot of years and recently haven't done as well. So what happens is when something gets focused that closely, you're going to have a, a, a race that's really uh, centered on whoever the two candidates are, and it becomes flippable. It becomes a Democrat possible win because of that. And so, yeah, I think it, I think it makes it an interesting and an important seat. Uh, Craig, do you agree? Well, I think that if this was a general election race, I think Republicans would hold the seat. But this will be a special election in the middle of the you know winter months that um, I, Democrats have a chance. I mean, they have they have a primary down there, and the last two candidates that ran for that office, you know, are running against each other now to be the candidate. Both of those candidates only lost that state senate seat by a few hundred votes. So they're good candidates. I mean, they're people who are, you know, been tied into that community for a long time. So I think it's going to be important here um, to see who the Republicans nominate to be their candidate. If they have a, a strong candidate with local ties, I expect that they will do well. OK, time to look into the crystal ball. Uh, Craig, we'll stick with you for this question uh, for now. Is, is this kind of back and forth over and arguing over the results of, of elections the future of the election process? Uh, I don't think so. I think, look, any time that you have a close contest with just a, you know, a very tight finish, it exposes the flaws in the system. And that's what we're experiencing not only here, but in other parts of the country. Okay, and Pete, do you do you agree or do you have a different take on this? I agree with that, and actually, what it exposes, and I don't mean this even in, expose sounds like a negative way of putting it, is we're, we're human beings that run these things, and so when you have a six-vote race, human error. There's no there's there's no malfeasance a lot of times. It's just we're human beings and we make mistakes, which I think is even more the reason to make sure you count every vote. But yeah, when you get it to the, when it's this close, it's just going to happen because people make mistakes. We're all human. Craig and Pete, we want to thank you both. Always spirited and fun to talk to you. Can't wait to see you again.
Rachel Marionette Miller Meeks taking a seat in Congress has opened up a seat in the Iowa legislature. She resigned her state Senate seat on December 30th. Governor Reynolds declared a special election for January 26th. And just like the November election, absentee ballots are allowed. You have to request it by the 15th, a week from Friday. On Saturday, January 23rd, you can start voting in person. And two days after Election Day is the deadline for absentee ballots to be returned. As of right now, no candidate has filed with the Secretary of State's office to run in the special election, but the chair of the Wapolo County Republican says we'll know soon after their nominating convention on Thursday. She's confident they'll keep that seat in the legislature. Senator Miller Meeks has been a good senator for us, so our confidence is her reputation will, of course, carry on, and, uh, and she's done a good job. The Republicans have done a good job on the economy, and so we've got a lot of things that are working that, uh, that have helped the people in this area. McAvinist says no matter who gets nominated for the GOP, the priority is to continue that progress for constituents. The one thing that's very important about this uh, Senate District 41 race is that we need to continue um, to look out for, for the people of the district and to reflect the district's values and views. Kavanaugh says the strategy for the special election is similar to the general election, but condensed given the time schedule. We hear from the Democrats later this week on the special election.